This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. What's up guys, Leon here. Welcome back to Tesla on Mir. This video is about a technology that permanently follows us in our everyday life. Whether it's shopping, in our pocket, and some crazy people sing even in our blood. We're talking about RFID, Radio Field Identification. It is really interesting to know that there could be an RFID tag hidden everywhere. But then I ask myself the question, can we also destroy them? Today we try four methods to destroy an RFID tag with the size of grain of rice without mechanical force. Before we start destroying anything, we need to clarify what RFID actually is. RFID means something like radio field identification. In principle, this is nothing more than a wireless energy transmission. Let's take a look at the simplest form of a RFID tag. It was invented sometimes in the 70s. The whole system consists out of a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter is a simple and ordinary LC oscillator. An oscillating circuit that emits electromagnetic waves at a specific frequency. For example, 125 kHz. The receiver is the actual RFID tag. It would be hidden, for example, in the sticker of a product. This consists, like the transmitter, of a resonant circuit. Important! The receiver oscillating circuit must be tuned to the transmitter. That means the transmitter and receiver oscillate on 125 kHz. If the receiver now comes close to a transmitter, energy is transferred from the transmitter to the receiver. In turn, this means the transmitter consumes more power. The power can be measured easily. Actually, this is how the anti-thief system in the supermarket works in principle. At the checkout, the receiver is usually destroyed with a strong magnet. Consequently, the transmitter cannot detect a receiver and no alarm is triggered. Unless you steal something. But how do we destroy such a ship? A strong magnet is used at the checkout in the supermarket. By moving the ship over the magnet, a high voltage is induced in the ship. This causes the capacitor of the oscillating circuit to break down. The tag is now nothing more than a shorted coil. Significant energy transfer between the transmitter and the receiver is thus impossible, since the transmitter and the receiver no longer have the same frequency. Although the voltage induced into the tag by a magnet is high, it is not high enough for the chips today. For this, we need an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. An EMP is a short but very strong electromagnetic pulse which is able to induce a very high voltage into objects. But a real EMP generator looks very different like EMP bomb from a movie. The simplest way to generate an EMP is with a resonant circuit. We can of course also build a flux compression generator, but my TNT is no longer sufficient for this. So to generate an EMP, we need a capacitor and a coil. If the capacitor is shorted via the coil, a short but very strong magnetic field is generated. What did Faraday say again? A voltage is induced by the changing of the magnetic flux density. The faster this happens, the higher the induced voltage. That's why we need high voltage. But where do we get this? The easiest way to get a comparatively harmless high voltage source is a disposable camera. I must say, they are really cool. The electrolytic capacitor is charged to about 300 volts to supply the necessary energy for the photo flash. All we have to do is short the electrolytic capacitor via a coil of magnet wire. This is a super simple EMP generator. Now we need an RFID tag. This is an RFID tag of the size of a grain of rice, which is normally implanted in animals. A number is stored on it, which can be read out. This chip is built like the tag from a supermarket, but on board is a small microcontroller which is responsible for communication as well as storing the number. If the code or number can no longer be recognized by the reader, the ship is destroyed. Let's see if we can destroy the ship with our DIY camera EMP generator. As you can see, nothing is happening there. I think the EMP was not strong enough. We need a higher voltage. An electronic fly swatter might be the perfect power source. Hmm. 
this is what the circuit board looks like. If you want to make a nice circuit board by yourself, the sponsor of today's video would be the perfect solution. JLC PCB is a PCB manufacturer which allows you to make your own PCBs. For only $2 you already get 5 PCBs. If that is not a good price, you can even go one step further. If you use the PCB assembly service, you don't even have to assemble the boards. Believe me, especially with SMD components you save a lot of trouble. The only thing you have to do is save your Gerber file as a zip file. Once this is done, select the desired parameters. Lead free? <laughs> yeah, definitely. What color are you in favor of? <laughs> Purple is sexy, isn't it? Just upload the file, order and you're done. Within 24 hours your PCB will be produced. And a few days later they will arrive. If you register at JLC PCB via the link in the video description, you will get 4 coupons with a total value of $27. To convert the flies water to an EMP generator, we simply have to short a coil across the capacitor again. But we do this preferably with a spark gap this time. <laughs> Next test guys. The chip is still alive. As you can see, such a chip cannot be destroyed by simple methods. What else do we have in a household? Hmm. An induction stove and a microwave. Let's test it. And the chip is still alive. The last thing I would think of now, what nearly everybody has at home, is a microwave oven. Last test. So guys, as you can see, it is quite hard to destroy such a rice grain chip. And of course it is no solution to put your hand with the implanted chip into the microwave or the dog or the bird, I don't know. There is always an important reason why such a chip has been implanted. So we better leave everything as it is. With that being said guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, leave me a comment down below. And then guys, we'll see us in the next video.